Hi, I'm Henry Stobart. I'm a reader in the music department and lots of people refer to me as an ethnomusicologist, which essentially means that I study different musics from around the world. Um, my main research area is really on indigenous musics from um, the High Andes and particularly from Bolivia. And uh, the, the, the key area that I'm really working on at the moment is looking at the impact of digital technology, but also issues about heritage and intellectual property in, in recent years. Now, I've been going to the Bolivian Andes for about the last 25 years, and my initial research was really based in rural communities, really a long way out in the countryside, and looking at how music fitted into people's lives there. Um, people who made basically lived from growing potatoes, from herding llamas and such like. And so, but and yet music was a really important part of their lives. And this for me, as a musician trained in the UK, um, it was amazing and going back and just finding a completely different approach to music, but also if this turned my ideas of, of, of things like what harmony means in music upside down. Um, so, and that really comes in handy for my teaching because I'm able to sort of really compare our notion of harmony in Europe with some of those ideas of harmony in the Andes. And actually, when you hear the sounds, of what people consider harmonious there, they often sound very dissonant to us. So some really interesting points come out of that um, initial research. Um, so more recently, I've started focusing on digital technology and the impact of that in the Andes, especially when people start to migrate to the towns. Um, and how their relationship to that, that music in the countryside start starts to change. You know, people have started to be, formerly they were often quite ashamed of being indigenous people, especially in the towns, and they wanted to hide that indigeneity. But since they've had a, an indigenous president in Bolivia since about 2006, people are now starting to be quite proud of that. And one of the ways of representing that pride in indigenous identity is actually creating things like music videos. And so that has started to become something really important in the country. Um, but alongside that, you find that um, most of the music in, in the um, Andes on sale is pirated. So that creates all sorts of problems for the musicians themselves trying to survive. Um, but also it creates complications around issues like heritage. Who has the rights to create this, these videos of this music and actually have take, make claim to this music? And so this is one of the really big issues you're finding in Bolivia at the moment. It's a country which is very, very poor. Um, and, it, and one of the things they see as their real resources is, is, is culture and heritage. And so this cultural heritage is seen as absolutely critical. But one of the big problems is that people are starting to identify that cultural heritage as a kind of property. So that you're finding that particular communities are saying this particular dance or this particular way of playing music uh, belongs to us. And whereas another neighbouring community might say exactly the same thing, you know, that's theirs. And so you're getting these real conflicts between neighbouring communities about ownership of particular music. But not only that, you're finding um, real conflicts between, um, for, for example, Bolivia and Peru, where there's a particular cultural expression, which you find on both sides of the border of those two countries. So these are some of the types of issues that I'm doing and, and increasingly bringing some of this more recent research into some of my teaching.